We're just six days away from election 2020, and even a political veteran like Rahm Emanuel hasn't been to a rodeo quite like this one before, <laughs> and he joins us now. Please welcome back former Chicago mayor and President Obama's former chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel. Rahm. Hey, Ooh, how are you? This ya? is, I tell you, this, whew, I'm, <laughs> we're all sweating here, I think. You know, because uh, almost 70 million votes have already been cast at this mm -hmm. point, and everybody's saying the polls are looking good for Joe, but they're, then they're looking good for the other one, and, you know, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Any thoughts about what's yeah. coming, what's happening? Well, a couple things. Uh, one, no person has ever won the presidency or lost the presidency losing independent voters. You have to win independent voters, and in every poll, Joe Biden's winning independent voters. Second, when you look at the map, you look at message, and you look at money, Joe Biden's winning on all of those. And then third, you compare state by state or nationally, Biden versus where Hillary was at this point. He is, you know, four to five points in better position in every one of those areas. So when you put that all together, you know, who would you rather be? Joe Biden or Donald Trump at this point. And then you take two ambience and you'll feel a lot better at the end of the day. But I mean, that is how I kind of uh, look at it. You got to look at independent voters. Biden is winning. No president has ever lost independent voters and won the election. He's not only winning nationally, he's winning in all the key kind of 10 battleground states. All right. Okay, that all right. sounds great. And we'll uh, but, you know, I'm worried about the thievery that could be going on. But let's get to that in a minute. Right now, I want to just say Trump is up to three rallies a day. Three. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, Team Biden's spending time this week in Georgia, Iowa, and Texas, of all places. Is, mm -hmm. is Texas really in, in play? Is that the right strategy? What needs to happen between now and Election Day for uh, Biden to win? And what needs to happen for Trump to win? Yeah. An I even worse scenario. One of the ways I look at this is you almost have two elections going on, not just the national and then the battleground states, but the early vote almost is going to be distinct and different from who shows up on election day. One of the things that we've never experienced before is your, like you said, 70 million people have already voted. By the time we get to Friday, it's going to be closer to 80 million. Yeah. I think it's going to be 150 to 160 million voters, which means we've never had half the vote come in beforehand. And if you look at it, Biden's significantly winning versus those who will vote on election day. And the question is, is he going to be building that lead? The second thing to the traveling plan, the reason the president has to do three rallies is both that's his form. On the other hand, he is short of resources, so he has no other alternative. And Joe Biden should be both covering the base, meaning Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, et cetera, and then expanding the field where you have Senate races, a state house like in Texas up, where you have unique opportunities, and that always happens. You have to be strategic about uh, the person and then and where you put them. And so uh, you don't go to Texas and lose sight of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And you, ABC has a poll out showing what's going on in Michigan and Wisconsin. But you do want to, uh, when opportunities are there, you want to be strategically capable of both moving financial resources for advertising as well as the principals, whether it's the president, vice president, or surrogates like President Obama. Yeah, Joe Biden's going to be uh, here in Florida, in my neck of the woods, in Broward tomorrow. And your old boss, President Obama, has been out on the campaign trail delivering blistering criticism. He's been here in Florida <laughs> twice in this final stretch. Here's what he had to say yesterday in mm -hmm. Orlando. What's his closing argument? That people are too focused on COVID. He said this at one of his rallies. COVID, 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 he's complaining. He's jealous of COVID's media coverage. I saw him here in Miami uh, on Saturday at a car rally, and it seems like he's enjoying this, relishing the opportunity to speak <laughs> his mind. He's been rather quiet for, you know, four years. Do you think he's making an impact? Because he sure is getting under his uh, Trump skin. Yes. I mean, well, first of all, your I mean, observation, I think, you know, he's been silent, ob observing, which all of us do who get elected. You don't say anything about your successor, et cetera. It's kind of built in, but he has been quiet for three and a half years. So this is not only is he enjoying it, but it's a bit cathartic for him. Two, he's playing an important role. And I do think it's while it's important for him to kind of be making the case, making the argument and energizing base voters for the uh, for the ticket. At no point, though, should it be that it overshadows the principle 
which is Bo Joe Biden, and it hasn't done that to date. And they're using him in a very smart way. And yes, he's having fun, but he is making a very cogent argument about what's wrong with the uh, current administration in the sense of the way they've handled COVID. In 2016, we saw a number of voters who secretly supported Trump. Now, political observers think there are secret Biden voters emerging. Uh, they are Republicans who've never supported a Democrat and won't do so publicly. Are you seeing signs of these voters? And what about Trump? Do his secret voters still exist? Uh, yes. I mean, first of all, you're going to have a turnout that's going to exceed both 2016 and other presidential, so both sides are going to turn out in record number. I do think if you go through some of the data uh, in, the, uh, in the states, Joe Biden's getting about 10 percent of the Republican vote. And I do believe that you're going to have uh, an, uh, a breadth of a coalition that goes everywhere from people, young voters who are really energized on climate change, et cetera, to for former Republicans and retired generals and CEOs who are supporting Joe Biden. That is a breadth of a coalition. And President Trump has only got the depth of going after one singular type of constituency. I do think he's turning uh, that vote out. But I think Joe Biden is getting a Republican vote. It's almost up to 10 percent if you go across Michigan, Pennsylvania, et cetera, because people are exhausted with this president. They can't, um, for, you know, this is turned into a race of Trump versus Trump. And people have to ask, do I want four more years of him in the kitchen, in our living room, in our dining room, at our workplace, constantly churning up society. I think they want the decency that uh, Joe Biden projects. And I think that's the race where you have a situation where style is substance. You have anger on one side and rage versus compassion and empathy and decency on the other. And so for both candidates, style is substance.